Hello, so um, I'm here at my new gym. This is a very personal gym. There's actually a lot of bodybuilders training here. Um, like this guy right here. Well, see those pictures here of the bodybuilders in Taiwan. You know, some of them are pretty impressive. Um, but the thing about bodybuilding scene in Taiwan is that they don't really check if you're on juice. So I can't really compete because all the top guys are juiced and it's just not fair. Uh, people like my last video, they like the format. I think I'm gonna go with this format uh, from now on, you know. Uh, film my workout and um, on top of the, um, the video, I'm gonna do commentaries about the mind, about psychology, philosophy, whatever else that I'm thinking about or that I wanna encourage you guys to look up or think about. So it's like, it's a really, really simple combination that I've never thought of before, you know. It come, the, the voice, my voice, my mind, uh, being abstract, being uh, laced up on top of my, my body, my workout images. Um, anyway, so um, so a lot of people ask me. Um, so uh, this this mind exploration, this brain body, uh, brain building thing is really interesting. How do you get started? Well, I'm gonna tell you, you're in a good path just by asking that question. You're exploring the mind. So just try to go deeper, see how deep into the mind you can delve. You know, see how. You know, there's nothing more satisfying. You're gonna get addicted to it. You're gonna get the intellectual high after you know having mind blowing experiences. And there's nothing more satisfying than destroying somebody in a conversation or just say shit like ideas that blow people's minds especially if you look big you know muscular so a lot of my subscribers are workout you know gym rats and uh, they don't expect you to have a brain and you blow their minds with you know ideas and they're like what the fuck you know what I'm saying and um, yeah with girls too you know like easier to seduce them <sighs> and uh, let's see so to get started what really got me interested in uh, studying the mind is Steven Pinker's book. That guy changed my way of looking at the world forever. And people that picked up his book said the same thing. And um, basically he's an evolutionary psychologist. Evolutionary psychology is basically a branch of psychology that studies the mind from the evolutionary standpoint using Darwinian uh, theories to explain how the brain works. See, before, when we, um, before we unravel the genetic codes of humans, we used to think that the mind can't really be studied. The mind is like immaterial, it's like too abstract, it's like a, a soul thing that's apart from the body. But then, the more we know about the brain and the genetic makeups that goes behind making a brain, and we've come to realize that the brain is just part of the body. The brain evolved with the, with the body. And everyone knows that the, the body of an organism evolved a certain way to fulfill a certain function in the survival game, the, the, the uh, selection, uh, natural selection process, right? Um, for example, the cheetah runs very fast, the giraffe has very long necks because their advantage to their survival. And uh, the problem about humans, humans have one thing that's more superior than anything else in the universe. It's the brain, and the brain is our weapon for survival. And if that's the case, then the brain, if it's part of the body, it must be evolved as well. And if it's evolved, it must have gone through evolutionary adaptations. And if that's the case, it must evolve certain innate modules that uh, were there in order for us to behave a certain way, to think a certain way, that's gonna be an advantage. That's gonna, that's gonna serve as an as advantage to us surviving, right? So um, after we got to know that, we realized that a lot of things, a lot of behaviors and a lot of things that we think about are really just innate. They're, we're evolved to think a certain way, to behave a certain way, right? It's not like everything just uh, programmed by society. It's not like guys are more likely to cheat because we watch a bunch of Hollywood movies where macho men like Arnold Schwarzenegger's, you know, get a lot of pussy. And it's not like girls like guys with muscular bodies because of this, you know, the same, you know, those same ideas. Uh, We've come to realize just recently that, see, there's a lot of really interesting examples that I'm gonna give you right now just to get your uh, juices flowing, but make sure to check out the books in my description box, you know. Um, for example, you can explain to someone using very simple and straightforward but interesting, very interesting evolutionary reasons why you behave a certain way. For example, I'm gonna give you a few examples here, then I'm gonna end the video and you guys can check out the, the books and the articles. Okay, number one, why do men cheat more than women? It's documented throughout history. But how does evolutionary psychology know that it's true that this is an innate and a natural tendency? Well, they document uh, behaviors and, and thought processes from around the world, and if all societies, independent of culture, behave the same way, then there's something going on in the genes. So men are more likely to cheat because in order to preserve the species, well, well What's the really what's the number one goal for organisms? To preserve the species, to pass on your genes. 
to pass down your genes. And, and if you want to, whatever is going to help you pass down your genes and help you spread your genes throughout the population to help that species survive will be uh, preserved in the genetic code, you know, generation by generation. See, men have more sperms than women. Well, women have eggs, but women only have one egg a month, right? They have a limited amount of eggs. So they have to be more, be more picky about who they fuck. And right? they can't afford to fuck around because they get pregnant, they have to spend all those resources, bodily and, you know, social resources to raise the baby. And it takes 10 months for them to, to just have one baby. But a man can fuck 20 times and, and potentially he can have 20 babies. And that's an advantage for the species. It's for men to fuck around and for women to be more preserved, to choose a good partner. That's why women are harder to fuck than men. So, well, another reason, uh, I'll give you another example. Why do we like sugar? People just like sugar. Everyone likes sweet stuff. Well, because back in the days when we were hunters and gatherers, there, there wasn't a lot of food laying around. Calories were scarves. So anything that had sugar inside, it had sweet, uh, has a lot of calories. And it's probably uh, you just need to eat one fruit that has a lot of calories and sugars inside to preserve your energy for the whole day. So we evolved to have sweet tubes, right? We want to pick up everything that's sweet, right? And it's a disadvantage in today's society because there's so much food out there, so much sweet stuff that people just get fed. It's the same thing with, uh, with uh, the thing about cheating or infidelity. Uh, we have laws nowadays saying that husbands can't cheat. You know, marriage, the, the culture thing came way later than the, the, the way we evolved. So men still had the tendency to cheat while the, the, the culture says, fuck you, you can't do that. So there's a lot of discrepancy between how we're evolved uh, to behave as a species and how society wants you to behave. And most of human misery comes from this discrepancy. Let me give you another example. Why do women are why are women attracted to men that are just so much older than them? And you rarely see uh, men attracted to women past the age of 30, 35, or 40. Because men can produce sperm all the way until they're like fucking 70 years old. So it's not uncommon for 15 year olds to think Brad Pitt's sexy. Because if they have sex with Brad Pitt, they can have a baby. That's fucking alpha, right? But women stop producing eggs after they're 40 or 35. So there's no advantage, evolutionary uh, speaking, uh, of you of a, of, a, of a young man fucking an older woman. So that's why nobody likes old women. But everyone, if they have the resources and the looks, can be attracted to men. Well, not everyone. Just most females would be attracted to Brad Pitt when he was like 45. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, last example. Why do you care about uh, people who are related to you more than people who aren't related to you, right? You d d definitely, if you want to. S okay, well, first of all, people are, are just more prone to save themselves. That's, that's very obvious because you, you have your own genes, right? You, the number one thing that you want to do is preserve your own genes, right? So suicide is the hardest thing to do ever. You could kill people before you kill yourself, in most cases. And then you will rather save your uh, immediate family, your mom, your dad, your sisters, uh, rather than saving strangers or even close friends. Why? Because they have your fucking genes. So in a way, you're selfish in that you just want to preserve your own genes by saving your mom, saving your sister, you're in a way saving your own genes, right? You, you, you're, 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 you're bringing up the advantage of your genes getting passed on by saving your relatives, right? That's why mom loves kids, they want to preserve their own genes because if you kill your son, your genes gone. Right? And why do we care about our wives and girlfriends so much? Because potentially she has half the genes of your son. Anyway, so those are just some really interesting examples of ways to explain human behaviors uh, using evolutionary uh, the peaking, uh, mechanisms. And that our brain is a fucking uh, weapon that, or, or a tool that's helping us survive. Right? So check out the books.